Hi, in this video I'm going to set up the O-Drive system for the first time and this is the first time I've set it up and it's the first time I've used Python as well so I'll probably make a few mistakes but I hope to highlight those mistakes and then overcome the problems I encounter so you can see all the steps that I take to install this sort of system. I've decided to mount the AMT102 sensor, the rotary encoder, on the back of the motor but inside the compartment to keep the swarf out. So the rotary encoder works the other way around so that it actually faces the back of the motor as opposed to mounting it this way around on the outside of the enclosure. And I found this works really well and also if you wanted to take the rotary encoder off you don't have to take the collet off first to take the rotary encoder off this way around. You can actually set up the collet on the back of there and that simply slots on and that works really well. You can take that back off again and you don't have to disturb the collet. So I'll let it run and see what you think. Feel free to subscribe and like and also comment below or on my project in the O-Drive website and I'll try and get back to you. Thank you for watching. So this is the O-Drive website with its community area and lots of helpful people helping people through their projects that are using the O-Drive system. One of these projects is mine and you'll probably recognise it as my milling machine that I'm converting to CNC using the brushless DC motors from O-Drive. So on the main website You've got the O-Drive system itself and the key specs for that for both the 24 volt and the 48 volt versions uh, where mine is the 24 volt version that I'm running at 12 volts so I'm going to run it off a 12 volt battery eventually but at the moment I'm going to be running it on a 12 volt power supply so you can buy it directly from their website and as you can see there's plenty of projects that people are working on using this system So the main reason to come to this site is to have a look at the getting started guide which is very comprehensive and steps you through each stage of setting up the O-Drive and the motors. So the first thing I need to do is install Anaconda which is a piece of software that allows you to run Python from your PC. So download that which I've sped up a little bit. And once that's downloaded, just stick that on to install. There's a few options here. I'm just going for the defaults for now. So it takes a little while to install, but I've actually sped it up. So after installing Anaconda, you need to get the utility to install the drivers for the O-Drive. So just start up Anaconda first. Then install the O-Drive tool. The O-Drive tool is where you will communicate with the board and set it up. Then you need this utility to install the drivers for the board so you can actually change the way the computer talks to the board itself either via native USB or USB serial link so you can send it serial commands 
So install that. It takes a little while to install that. Took me a little while to figure this one out. But once installed, you can actually choose the board, which is O Drive 3.6 native. Place the driver and we should be good to go. So now you want to start the O Drive tool on the Anaconda software. So in Python, then you get this little green command prompt. And as you can see, it says connected to O drive and it's got my serial number. So I'm just going to check the voltage on it just to make sure that it's communicating okay. Then stick some parameters in, so half an ohm resistor as the brake resistance. And then configure the pole pairs for the motor. These are the most important parts to put in first. There's, there's quite a handy guide on this where you can work out how many pole pairs the motor's got just by using a magnet. Then type in all the other details. So I'm using the AMT 102, so that's got 2048, so I've configured it to 2048 pulses per revolution. There's a dip switch on there that you can do that with. Um, and with that, because it's quadrature information that comes off of it, then it's multiplied by four. So I've got 8192 counts per revolution, so I'll stick that in there as well. Well, if I can spell it properly missed out the decimal point. For some reason I've got a bit of a dodgy keyboard that when the O drive is switched on the wireless keyboard doesn't work properly. It's probably because I've got the wires too close to it. Anyway, it's worth saving the configuration every time you change it and then rebooting the system after you've saved it, which is a little note there. If you can spell reboot, that is. So it just reboots the system, and then after a few seconds, it should pop up, yet yeah, reconnected to O drive, and then my serial number again. So I'm just going to show a quick video of physically putting it together so you can see how I've got it set up. So 
So the voltage I'm running with is 12 volts. I'm just going to put the probes together and turn the power supply on. So I can set the current limit to 5 amps. Just to protect the overdrive and the system while I'm running it. If you do forget the resistor and you're running the system under load, you can actually damage the power supply and possibly the O-drive as well, where the braking power tries to go back into the power rail. Just do another one to clarify. So to get any position control you need to put the motor into closed loop control mode and then you can send commands to it to actually change the position. I've just done this at the moment so I can feel how powerful the motor is at holding its position. Like a stepper motor holds, this will be holding the position. It feels like a very powerful stepper motor. But by doing that, I made the current unstable and it wouldn't run any other commands until I'd reset the errors. You can reset the errors either by typing in the dump error O drive true or rebooting the system. For some reason I did both. But I then forgot about using the closed loop control system to run the motor. So I got myself into a bit of a spiral of not being able to get it working again. Well, it was completely my fault and didn't read the instructions. So it's definitely worth reading the instructions first.
by not putting it into closed loop control mode this obviously it was not working it was quite late at night so to my defense But once I've figured it out, put it in closed loop control mode, use the set point, and everything worked. So now I could get on with configuring the rest of it. Right now I've got that all figured out, I'll make it a bit neater so you can see everything that's going on as I'm configuring it. It's worth keeping a notepad file as well with all the commands and configuration in so you can just quickly copy and paste out of that. So there's a good tuning guide here, so once you get it all up and running and working well, you can actually step through this tuning guide and make sure you've got it as accurate as possible and as powerful as possible. I'm just tuning it for now offload, but once I get it on the milling machine, then I'll set it up again, I'll run through this tuning guide um, and get the motor working at its best in that configuration.
I think I set the velocity limit a little bit too high there. Something's not quite right, so I'll just set everything back to normal again and run through the guide. That's a bit better. That's working well. As you can see, if you step up the velocity gain, the tape on the motor is twitching backwards and forwards to the point where 11 makes it vibrate quite a lot. So I'll just step that back to 5.5, .5, so half of that value, as it says in the guide. Definitely don't set it to 322. That's better.
So I'll speed this up because it takes a little bit of time to set all this up. So now we're at a good point, we'll see if we can speed this up a little bit. Yep. That's a little bit quicker. That's a nice system, and that's only on a small power supply as well. No, didn't like that. Why not? Uh, under voltage, that would make sense. So it's probably the power supply voltage dropping. Get it to stop and rotate the other way whilst it's moving. Seems to cope with that quite well. That's a very nice system. 